<laughs> it's fucking weird. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a Q&A and it's going to be with my husband. Say hi, babe. Hi. FYI, he's a man of few words, so bear with us. We have a little surprise guest today. But earlier in the week, I posted on my Instagram stories if you guys had any questions for us in regards to Miguel's boot camp experience, his AIT, and how my whole experience was during those couple of months and I have your questions right here. So the first one is mostly for you babe. What type of food do you have and what type of meals do they give you and how many times a day? Wow. Well, shit. <laughs> was it crappy food? You could say it was crappy food. It was not really that crappy. It was, it was like... Same food over and over? Yeah, because for breakfast it was either eggs, bacon, hash brown, oatmeal, biscuits with gravy and sausage. Like for the past six months it was the mm -hmm. same stuff. I mean, lunch, it was different, depends on the day. Was it like sandwiches? No, no, it was like get normal food but not like greasy stuff it was like because they try to keep you healthy it was like Bit. plain away but it was, it was right right how about dinner same as lunch it was lunch yeah almost like sometimes you know we get we either get the uh, for lunch or for dinner but i guess it doesn't matter <laughs> you gotta eat they give you three meals mm -hmm. depends you know, usually the breakfast is like between 05 to 7 in the morning and lunch can be from 11 to 1. Mm -hmm. And dinner is from, if I'm recalling right, 430 to 6. One thing that he hasn't mentioned that I have not gotten used to is the fact that he is very much accustomed to eating standing up and the first time that he did that I kid you not you guys I was freaked out by it I was so annoyed that I told him just just sit down because that is that is really aggravating me well you know but I understand the reasoning behind it though yeah but like I think that's a weird thing to be easy you know because sometimes you know Kind of guy's fucked up. You can say shit like that. Yeah, but I mean, uh, they kind of fucked up, you know, they make it, you know, you're standing and go in a squat position. At first, it was like annoying. But then I said, well, you're not like, alright, let's get over it. And so much so that now he's, he does it here at home, so. And NIT, you know, they don't make you do it unless, you know, you're doing some research, I guess. But, uh, so you're saying AIT is more relaxed? In a way, yeah, it is. Depends, you know, if you also, like a, like an MP, combat engineer, infantry, that you're probably going to get the same treatment. I'm not sure because I'm an engineer, but I'm on November. So my AIT was different than those guys. Basically, pretty much is the same. Uh, well, you will find out if you enlist. It's not really that bad. You know, it can be crappy, but well, there's some stuff that really tastes like shit, but you get used to it. You get used to it after a while. Okay. Now, now this question is from, I believe the handle is It's Miss Joan. Do you plan on working when you move to your husband's duty station? Uh, that is a definite yes. Um, for me, I've always told him that I cannot picture myself being a stay-at-home mom. Not that that is a bad thing, if that's what you want to do, great. But for me, I just could never picture myself being at home all day. <laughs> um, I do plan on working, like I said, but I know there's going to be a couple of months 
where I'm not going to be working so I will be a stay at home mom for a while. Come over here. So next question. If you have already started, what is the process of getting a house on post? It's a bitch. I got no idea. <laughs> we are going in blind, you guys. We have no idea what well, it is. Kind of know, you know, you can call whatever, you know, I guess. As far as I know, them, what I've been telling about my friends, but I'm, I've been doing it because... I can't do anything. Keeping busy, you know, with a lot of stuff. But when you get there, well, actually, whatever you get stationed, you gotta go to a section. Can they kind of help you out on that? I know how. I don't know how the process works. But because being married, we got the choice with in, um, in post or off post. Off post. So there's pros and cons to living on post and off post, and I, most of you guys know that one of the biggest perks of living off post is one if you find a rent that's cheaper than your actual BA BAH then you kind of get to pocket the rest of, of the money there. Yeah, not really because you still got to pay the bills, so. bills. But granted if you find something that is way below your BAH you'll have some money left over to kind of finagle. If you live on post though one of the biggest perks there is the fact that you're close to work. Everything is around, so pretty much, you know. Yeah. Like, being at Fort Leonard Wood, I was able to see that a lot of things were really nearby, whether that was the Burger King or the PX or movie theaters or even the hospital. Like, things were really within reach. But if you were off post, yeah, it's kind of a tough one. So... I'll let you know when I find out myself too. Yeah. How the process goes. Side note: I did call the housing department down there, or one of the community complexes, and I couldn't do anything because I didn't have his orders. So that's one of the things that we do know that you have to have your orders for your duty station in order to start the whole entire process. So next question. This one's mostly for you. Should I join? the reserve with a 10 month old baby and this question is from Erica from It's er Miss It's Erky's World. Sorry about that. The question is should she join the reserve with a 10 month old? Well, depends. It's up to you. But she was like six when I left. Yeah, about six months. About six months. Yeah, she had but, just turned six months um, like the day after. I didn't go to the reserve way. Um, I have to do this so it's different in a way. I would say if you know, if you got like a stable job or like really good job and you want to have Spend both, both worlds, you know, serve and at the same time stay home, you can do that. But yes, if you want to go, you know, active, I guess, you know, it just depends on what, you, what your mm -hmm. needs are. And, what you want? What you want to do? Yeah, you're planning to go to college. You can do, you can, you can do the reserve way. But it's just you know, I mean, at least in my case, I miss Riley a lot. But in a way, you know, she was also like the one pushing me, you know, to go through. You might get homesick because you're gonna miss your baby. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's something you really want to do, I say go for it and do it. <laughs> yeah, simple as that. If that's something you really want to do, go for it. Because you got to think about this. It's not going to be forever. forever. It's just going to be a couple of months. Depends on what kind of MOS you choose. If you choose to go into the Army. Because, ah. Uh, I don't know how the Marines or, or, or the Air Force or Navy work, but the Army, you know, you can be an AIT for a year, four weeks. Basis for everybody's the same, ten weeks, two and a half months. You want to see it like that? And 
the time goes fast. That's something, you know, well, at least at the first, you know, it kind of sucks because, you know, you don't know oh, what yeah. you're doing. And they yell at you a lot? Well, I mean, that's kind of a common thing, but. It's a common thing, but it's, it's, you just got to be prepared mentally, mentally and physically. More than mentally, because if you're not prepared physically, you know, they, they build you up. But mentally, that's something that you you got to work with and yeah you should be fine give it a try go for it but so. if you feel like you're going to miss your baby too much then maybe you should consider joining the reserves i say make a list of the pros and cons and then weigh well, your options reserve you know after you're done with ait you're definitely going home that's that's a fact. We, but I could do this, you know, it's, it's a different cause. If you marry or now, well, if you don't marry, there's a big chance that probably will push you in the States. But if, so you, you're if you're single, because a lot of my friends, they went overseas. Some of them went to Germany, Italy, and Korea. And another went to Hawaii. And a few to Alaska, but mostly all the married people, you know, they stay in, in the U.S. Um, majority of the single guys, girls, uh, they went overseas. So, if you want to go to service and want to spend more time with your family, I mean your baby, I don't know if you're married now, I say go to service. If that's the best choice, I guess, for you. Mm -hmm. Where is the next question? It says here, Riley's education. <coughs> Funny you should ask this, Luisa. But we were stumbling, well, I shouldn't say we, I was, stumbled upon uh, the child care section on the Fort Stewart page. And when I was looking at the hours for childcare, it's actually pretty flexible compared to civilian daycare. I know that it's either from from our experience from six in the morning or seven in the morning to I think the latest five, maybe six in some places. Um, when I was looking at their website, it was five thirty in the morning to six o'clock at night. So there, you have a whole like what over like what 12 hours you know 11 hours 12 12 hours 12, 10. of like daycare so that's pretty good because considering their schedule is uh, very hectic and then you have to work your schedule around uh, their schedule so you have to just be very flexible is what i've heard in this lifestyle so in regards to her education obviously right now she's going to be in daycare they do offer pre-K on base from what I saw. Um, and they got pre-Ks. Pre um, there's some it? places that go to, all the way to high school, but I don't know which one. But I know. If, yeah, I saw pre-K there I'm, in kindergarten. If I'm not wrong, for school, well, all the way to middle school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And elementary, so. so it just but at the depends. moment, it's, I guess it's not something we have to worry about her. Yeah, because she's just she's not there yet. She's not there. I mean... By the time you get out, she'll be like pre-K age. So no, that's when we'll think if about it. I get it. out, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens with that poor. Yeah. So education-wise, I know it, it gave She'll be fine. She'll be fine. <laughs> Definitely is one of the suits that I push for her. It's like, she, she better she better love school. <laughs> You'll be fine. Next question. When will he return home to you and what will his schedule be like when things settle down? This is from Christina. Hey girl! Um, so as you can see, he's home for the next couple of weeks. And then he goes off to, yes, mi amor, to his next duty station. Well, actually his first duty station. Um, how will things look when they settle down? Things will never settle down. <laughs> it's the army. Um, there's always something unexpected. It's going to happen. Expect the unexpected. Just pretty like much. 
So even though he will be on base and will have some sort of normalcy, there probably will be times where he won't be home until 8, 10 o'clock at night. There probably be weekends where he'll go for maybe a week or two or maybe even a month for training. And of course, there's always the D word, deployment, where he might just go for what, like, what's the most minimum, like six months? Like the least that people send you? I don't know, I guess. Yeah, I guess, because I, I never see or heard of anybody going for three months anywhere. Whatever they want. I mean, yeah. they, Basically, they need, whatever they want whatever or they the need mission to. is for, you know. Yeah. But it could be anywhere from six months to well over a year, depending where in the world they send you mm. and wherever they send you i may or may not be able to go with riley if they send him somewhere where it's a combat zone definitely not going staying here but if he's going somewhere else there could be a possibility that i could follow suit no deployment that's not well not deployment but well if i got no assignment overseas me but yeah, so I don't know if if there's ever going to be a moment that's going to mean settling down. It might just be an uh, imitation of normalcy for a bit. But what is the next question? Perhaps, how is this going to affect your relationship if you feel comfortable talking about it? I don't know. Um, military will, tr will certainly throw curveballs we'll and see. we'll see that. what happens. Um, I've heard from a lot of other milsos on here on YouTube that it definitely tries your relationship and it could either break you or make you guys. But I've seen a lot of them pull through so... We'll, we'll see, see what happens. <laughs> at point, you know, you've got to take a day at a time. For sure. We don't know what's going to happen. And the last question is also from it's Miss Joan. How did you plan your trip to your husband's graduation? Did you stay at a hotel on post? So, what I did was that I looked, I think it was their leisure department in for Leonardwood and I called them because I knew that certain airlines oh, offer oh, yes my mom yeah okay here we go. Yeah. certain airlines offer military discount FYI if you're bringing family members and you think that they're gonna be able to fly from a different state than you that's not gonna happen in order for them to get a military discount on their airfare, they have to fly with you or with the service member. So keep that in mind. But I called their leisure department and they were able to assist me. I think her name was Kelly, if I'm not mistaken. She was able to assist me with flights, hotel, and car, I believe. They were all in one package, sort of say. I did not stay at a hotel on post because I did not know like how was that going to work. Um, leaving, going in and out of post, I've never done that until I went to his graduation. But it's fairly easy, you just show your ID and anybody that's over the age of 18 has to show their driver's license. But yeah, we stayed at a hotel that was like maybe five or 10 minutes outside of Fort Leonard Wood and it wasn't bad at all going in and coming out. But yes, definitely contact their leisure department or wherever they're being sent for basic and they will be able to assist you guys. I think those are all the questions. But do you have any tips, I guess, for anybody going into basic or AT? Well, <laughs> my tip is different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Basic, I guess. Just keep an eye on the game. To what they told you to do. Keep an open mind. And don't give up. You'll be fine. 
basic in my experience i want to add a little side note to that the first couple of weeks for was hard you guys i'm not going to sugarcoat it i was so used to miguel helping me out with the baby whether it was i need to do the dishes i would be, ask him hey can you like check her out make sure that she's fine give her a bottle um if i was going to a doctor's appointment he would take care of her vice versa that completely changed once he left she used to sleep in her crib we started co-sleeping we still co-sleep to this day um two incidents that i can remember that were really really tough were obviously the day that he left and the two times that i got sick and one of those times she was also sick as well so that was not a pretty sight and we're a pretty day she had two ear infections and i had struck throat that day so I had to put my ailments aside, take care of her while I was feeling like complete shit. Thankfully, my mom came over that weekend and she like helped me out with taking care of her and I just took care of myself and basically slept. The other time was when I just woke up in the middle of the night and I was just throwing up and I had to bring her with me into the bathroom because I couldn't leave her on the bed fully awake because she could fall in her head so that was also not pretty so that's how basic could be really really tough on you obviously emotionally you miss you know your spouse um there were times that i did cry um i did not want to show that to him when he would call or i think there was one time we facetimed during basic right mm, no I no i think yeah oh it was a it was a fail time we for my birthday you tried calling me through facetime and when i picked up oh yeah yeah you're right you're right yeah they like either when um uh, when i was trying to pick up he hanged up or they told him it's time to give back the phone and i think i even documented in one of my videos I felt like such shit, you guys. Like, it was my birthday. I don't know what he did to get that privilege. He probably did something ridiculous. And the fact that I could not speak to him was really heartbreaking. So I kind of lost it that day. But then after a while, like, you start getting into a whole routine, into a rhythm. And I threw myself into just being focused on taking care of her and work. And then before I knew it, it was already his graduation. And then he went into AIT, which was much, much easier. And I felt like it went by a lot quicker than basic because at least for him, they did give him his phone. Yes. They did give him his phone during the weekends. So that helped out a lot. And it didn't seem like it was so long. Yes, Riley? So... AIT can be much, much easier than basic, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah? Can you say hi? Okay. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up so that we know what type of videos you guys like. And do not forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. And as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.